<laughs> um, the look we're gonna do today is something I like to call ready to wear. Um, and I think it's very timely. It's very something that we should be doing this season. Obviously, you know as well that ready to wear refers to clothing that is ready to go, right? It's not necessarily couture, it's something you see it on the rack and you take it and works together nicely. So what I wanna do today is teach you a cut I've never taught before. It's gonna have components um, from the SMART method, which is available at our Style Lab Academy for those of you who have attended. So I'm gonna use familiar um, tools, if you will, to get there, but the application of these tools will be a bit different. Um, and we're gonna mix and match a lot of things here today. This is brand new content, not available in your local salons, not available in any curriculum. I can't see that calling. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, so before you get started, so everybody, I've placed you on mute. So we have a nice clean uh, version of Michael Sean doing his haircut. So as he's going along, if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to make, just put them in the chat box. And MSC, I will narrate as we go along. How does that sound? Sounds wonderful. Perfect. And that's helpful because if somebody sent a question, it's showing up about the size of uh, an ant. So. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. I'm here at my home studio in West Hollywood, California. Um, and again, this is ready to wear. So one thing I did in advance because, I'm sorry, I just think it's boring, is I cut a zero because we could have sectioned and dropped every section and cut that zero. But, um, you know, raise of hands, who knows how to cut a zero? Yes, everybody, thank you for raising your hand. Um, so we're just gonna dig right in with our sectioning. So from the center, right, our, our north balancing point, I created a triangular section. And then I took that from the arch of the eyebrow on both sides. I didn't want to get anything too wide there. And I took it back the distance. This is sort of my, my rule of thumb, if you will, for, um, for how much fringe to start with, is I like to take um, half of my comb right as the distance, and then I'll section that out. And if it doesn't seem like enough, then I can take a little more. But it gives you a way to use right angles to really give yourself a little bit of a measurement. For those of you who haven't seen me before, if a question comes up, why is he using a long-tailed comb? What a nut. Um, I do it because it just it's easier for me to section, and generally you're holding half the comb with your hand anyway, so it's just a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> Once we have our fringe, and for those of you who saw curtain fringe, this is similar sectioning to that. We then take out the crown from that same high point of the eyebrow all the way around to our recession point here. And recession point, that's, it's early for me, to our crown point here. Sorry about that, recession is forward. And what that gives you, if you do it right, I like to call my little Pac-Man on top, little Pac-Man fever section. You're getting right on the top there. Once you've got that, then I want you to take, it's called the mast point. It's the mastiff bone just behind the ear there. I want you to section all the way to the other side. Um, it's not a complete happy face section. It's sort of a, you know, uh, she's okay. She's kind of happy face smile. So just a gentle smile in your section working all the way up to your mass point. And that gives us the basic sectioning. Just take that out of your way um, for now, and then we're ready to go. I'm going to first start with our curtain fringe, and then with this haircut, I'm gonna work inside, and then we'll finish the work outside on an already previously air-dried mannequin. I find that this is a good way working from the inside out to encourage texture and movement and balance in the haircut, especially when we're not gonna be ironing it or curling it or blow drying it in any way. So to start the curtain fringe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very, very slight section right here in the very, very middle of the curtain fringe. Just a very, very slight section. And remember, if you have any questions, 
go ahead and shoot those out and Colleen will say, hey, we've got a question here and I'll answer it for you. The hair is damp, not wet, because I want to be able to see a little bit of the movement in the hair. If it needs a little more, what I'll use is the No Frizz Weightless Spray. I love this, we call it magic water on our education team. It puts a nice th thin barrier there so the hair's not gonna frizz up as you're cutting. So what I'm gonna do, because I want this to be very soft the entire time, is I'm gonna take this section and I'm going to hold it down. Get that chopstick out of my way. I'm gonna hold it down like so, and then I'm gonna bring it out to about the tip of the nose. And I'll turn her so you can see there. So holding it out, bringing it forward to the tip of the nose. This is gonna give me a section that's just slightly a bit longer as we get to the outer parts here. And when I get to that point, taking the comb out of my way, I'm then going to cut in motion as well. And so with that very first cut, I've already started to get a little bit of that curtain fringe there. And check it out, make sure it's not crooked. Now for me, I think this kind of curtain fringe is just money. I love the way it sits in the eye, looks expensive to me. So I'm pretty happy with that very first section there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another from that same apex, if you will, that same starting point, and I'm gonna work from side to side. Take a tiny bit of your previous guide so you know what the heck you're doing. Turn it this way so you can see now. Holding it, bringing it down to that guide. If you feel like you can't see the guide, like me, <laughs> go ahead and take more of the previous section. Coming down, see that section, and cutting up, 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 and away giving me beautiful softness there. And then if you need to look for any little weird hairs, have a little runaway there, you can go ahead and take that out. Going side to side, just to make sure to keep the balance. Thin little section, take that out of the way. Get some of that previous guide in there. Holding the entire section, bringing it out. Hopefully you can see that guide. If not, what you can really see is the angle of my fingers. See how they're almost flat to the floor? And then I'm cutting in an upward direction. How do you Checking know as I go. How do you know when to stop your forward, your, your motion to the top? So you just keep going until the hair is gone. The main thing is to just maintain your angle. So you really want all the hair to go. Otherwise, you're going to have these kind of long little stringy pieces there. And we're definitely wanting to create a fringe. Hopefully that answered your question. Taking another faint little section here. Don't get sections too big. We really want that nice soft bounciness in through that area. And about how much tension are you holding that hair with? It's actually quite a bit of tension. I don't know how to put it into a percentage, but I want to make sure that I've got nasty little tangle she's got. I want to make sure that I actually have a good grasp on it. Oh, damn in close enough where you can see. So it's pretty tight actually. Okay. Holding good strong tension, bringing it out so I can really see that guide. And I'm keeping that tension all the way up. And again, we're removing the hair. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna give me more movement and more texture in that fringe as I'm working through it. And do you have any suggestions for our clients who maybe have like a strong cowlick or a widow's peak? Yeah, you know how I said on work, work on semi-wet hair? I might work on drier hair for her. 
because it's going to be important to really read what that hair is doing or if she's someone who and you know those clients if she knows where her part is she knows where that part is so well that she could literally draw it with a marker if you have a client like that where she's very specific let's get her blown out in the way she always does it and then cut from there and sometimes if it's there are calyx that we need to learn to embrace and then there are calyx that are just wrong and so i feel like you need to make a decision if you're going to cut into the calyx i would go semi-wet if you're going to um always style it the same and and sort of go against the calyx then i would make it straight and i would do this portion of the dryer hair and then we have one last section of our curtain fringe here oh yeah i'm singing and thank you to those who are watching us from uh europe we have europe on the call today we have people in asia i had all these plans to say thank you in your native language i know we have dutch watching so donkey bell and then we have chinese watching so for that one let's say uh shishi so as you can see here, it's a little bit heavier on this side. So it's because I didn't hit my guide. And so you just kind of go back in and hit the guide. For me, it's trying to stay out of my own way here. For you, it may be a number of reasons, but you're always going to see it right away. I'm just cutting in that upward direction and boom, that fixed it immediately. So it just gently works away from the face and looks Oh, so pretty for her ready to wear. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we've got a good balance going on there. We're now gonna move to the back. And what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of a technique called axis cutting. And this is the axis technique for shape. It can be used in a variety of looks. I really love wearing, uh, doing it on curly hair, for example. Um, and it's fantastic just to bring out the natural texture in the hair as well. So I'm going to make sure her head is straight up and down. I'm going to hit her with a little bit more of the weightless spray. Just keeping a nice canvas to work on. And straight from the center of the section, I'm just going to take a straight vertical. No triangular shape at all needed. And it's going to be about, uh, let's make it, a half inch wide. We don't need to get crazy here today. So let me section that and then I will show it to you. And this is where we're really gonna start to put a little blend and at the same time, a bit of disconnection in the hair so that it will do more when you wake up or sleep in it without doing anything to it. So that's about a half inch section right in the middle there. I'm now going to take that section. You can practice on whoever's next to you at home or on yourself. This is going to be a palm forward or a palm to palm technique. Palm is, or back of the hand is against the head. Combing that out and over the hand, keeping it neat, nice and neat and then coming off the head about the distance of half of a full comb or to half of a comb. Now, if she has extra length, I would go with a full half comb, which is three inches. Sorry for those of you who are on metrics. But with her, I want to go probably about half of that. So we would be closer to two inches or so, one and a half to two inches from the head keeping that all nice and flat in the hand. I'm then going to make my first cut, tapping the shear, and then working in an outward and upward direction. What's gonna happen is you'll see from the very first cut, the hair's really starting to take on a very unique, but very much its own personality there. I'm gonna take the next section. It, there is no need to include any sort of a traveling guide here because we've already really kind of compacted that layer 
and it's doing its own thing. So you don't need to cut it again. Same thing here. We know the back of the hand is flat against the head. We then lift the palm upward. I like to say, make sure it's as if you were serving a plate. This is the angle, not sort of serving drinks, right? So we're serving plates, just going in an outward direction. Taking that section, holding it out, keeping it flat, getting my distance, which really ended up being about two inches. And also, do you notice that I'm moving up, up, and away from it? The reason I'm doing that is because I want to preserve the length of the hair. I want to keep the integrity toward the ends. I don't want it to get too wispy. If I took that same type of sectioning and I came down with it, it would be really cute, but it would be more of a shag type shape. When I do it in this fashion, it ends up just giving that sort of interior shag kind of shape, but keeping everything on the ends and edges nice and thick. Okay, now this is a wider section, but I always get a little nervous of over cutting in through this area, especially if she's going to pull her hair back, which in these times, there's a lot of pulling your hair back. So what I'm gonna do is flat against the head. I'm just going to over direct or pull that one step back to the very line of the previous section combing it nice and neat, marking it out, and then shear is flat, and then we're cutting in an upward direction. And you can see we wouldn't want to, to get too short in through that area because we are already getting some shorter pieces and a bit of texture, but that's all good. We're not gonna put the same level of texture on the top because then it would be more of a shag haircut but it's just giving some life to the hair. See how already we're getting a nice reaction. You can let this completely dry on its own, or I've got a little tip and trick for you. I'll show you in a little bit later, which I think is so fun. Um, my version of doing rag curls in the hair. I know if you're like me, you go to a beauty supply and it's like, okay, there are the things I'm here for, and then there's always a bit of exploration, right? You're like, hmm, what is this? What is this supposed to do? What could I do with it? Then I go to fabric stores, and I go to downtown LA, and I'm always looking for weird little things I can use for hair. And so I'll show you what I found. It's kind of like a donut meets a Jan Brady roller. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, take the section, flat against the head. Serving dinner, not drinks. Flatten that hand. We've got a tiny little guide hanging out here. And remember, moving it up, not down, because that will just take a little bit more length than we want to give today. And when you're cutting, just keep hitting it with the late weightless spray. We call it magic water for a reason. It is magic putting that micro thin barrier over the hair, preventing frizz, keeping your hair cleaner longer. I just love to saturate curly hair in it. It reacts so nicely because it's fully protected and it's allowed to be frizz free and exactly how it wants to be without any weight or crunchiness like a gel. Marking that line, I have a little bit of a cross reference there as well. And then cutting up, up, up. Sorry if all you saw was my arm that time. <laughs> just tell me if you can't see, just yell at me. Okay, and remember I said we're gonna do something with this last section. We're gonna take it back to the line, back to this original line. We're not gonna cut it right where it lives, but we're gonna go back just one section. And the reason we're doing that is so that it doesn't get too short right there at the sides where she's gonna wanna pull her hair back. So I'm hitting it back, measuring it out, and still cutting in the upward and away from it direction because that, the weight of gravity pulled the length away from me before I was able to cut it because I would cut it. Okay, giving this a full saturation and you know, a portion of this, I have a, a pre-done 
mannequin for the dry cutting. Um, but even by the end of this, I can show her again and you'll see that the waves are just really going in there. And I mean, come on, she's like, she's a mannequin head imported from India, right? She's got, she, there's no reason for her to have this kind of wave texture necessarily. And it's, it's happening. So when you release that weight from hair in the right places, you get beautiful, beautiful performance out of it. So now what I wanna do is I'm going into the second phase of my internal cutting. Remember, we're gonna work inside and then we're gonna work outside. Before you move on, Michael, Sean, we just had a whole bunch of new people join us. So Hi, would you people. mind giving us a recap of what you've done so far before you go to your next section? But of course, welcome late people, we love you. <laughs> what we're doing here is a ready to wear, it's almost a wash and wear cut really. I want you to be able to just go to bed with your cut and wake up looking good. To get that, we're gonna work on the inside of our cuts and then we're gonna work on the outside of the cuts. We started with a curtain fringe. You missed the curtain fringe portion, but you can go to at Michael Sean Corby on Instagram and click on the MSC TV called Curtain Fringe to see how we did the curtain fringe there, but it really involves using tension and pressure and then cutting in motion to give you a soft, flexible fringe every single time. We then went in and used a, um, a technique that is our um, axis cutting that gives us a shape to the hair, palm flat against the head, and then working out. And the exciting thing for those of you just joining us is I'm gonna show that again in the next section. So you came in just in time where we were changing the technique completely, and that is we are going to a disconnect technique, um, and it's a brand new, we've never done it this way before, but it's disconnect to give you texture to the hair. So it will actually increase volume uh, and bounce, which people tend to want at the bottom sections of their hair. Um, and so I'm very excited about this one because it's new. So to do this, you're gonna hold the section straight out. And I tend to like to hold with my fingers in the downward direction so I can really get in there. And then what I want to do is, is fairly close to the scalp. I want to get some lift so that when she does that little zhuzhi thing to, to reactivate her volume, it's really going to lift and give her some. I'm going to take the, the still blade and I'm going to weave in nice and big. I'm going to weave in and I'm gonna weave in, and I'm not gonna hit the very top or the very bottom. What the hell is he doing? So I'm not gonna cut that off, but instead I'm gonna angle my shear, the tip toward my face, and then I'm gonna push just like I'm back combing the hair, okay? So now what we've done is we've created these little spots that will just give it a little more bounce, a little more texture right in that area. So. How many sections will I do this on? I like to do it when, because it's more intense, if you will. I'll skip a little section and then I'll take a big section. These are full inch sections and I never do this texturizing technique on the very edges for obvious reasons in case she wants to wear a ponytail. So here we go. The still blade is my weaver. We don't hit the bottom and we don't hit the very top. We're taking big sections and we push, 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 push. Little back combing motion there. And because it's at that angle, I know it seems like if we keep going, she'll be bald soon, but because it's at that angle, it's really gonna start to give some nice movement and some nice texture. Okay, skipping about a quarter of an inch, taking myself in, to the next, I was like, wait, where'd all that hair go? Okay, skipping about a quarter of an inch, bye. Taking the next section, one inch, nice fat one inch section. What type of adjustments would you make based on texture and density of your client's hair? Good question. So if she's extremely curly, I'm, I'm not gonna do this portion 
because it's too sporadic. If she's coarse and curly and it, um, she will actually benefit from this type of layering, this type of disconnecting, because in, a, in, a, in the same section, every time you as the stylist can establish exactly where the texture is being put. But I would avoid this on thick, coarse, kinky, kinky, coily type hair. If the hair is, I look close to Sunset Boulevard, excuse the loud cars. Um, if the hair is paper, paper, fine, thin, you know who you are. It's like frog fur on your head, little silk. If you know, if you have that type of hair, then I'm gonna avoid any kind of overlaying, layering, or thinning the ends, including this kind of texture. But if you are medium, if you are thick, if you have straight hair, this technique is great to be incorporated. Good question. Upward direction, do my weave, not the bottom. And really it's only about three sections I'm doing this on, and then let the back coming begin. Topage, topage, just push, push, woof. That's about all we're taking. This isn't a ton of hair and it's all these little details we're putting in there skip the quarter inch this gives me the nice final wide section here it's all these little details that you can put into a cut that really personalize it for your clients it's so much nicer than just you know grabbing a big thinning shear and making some chunks at the back not that i don't use a good notching shear i do um, but I just feel like this really personalizes it to her. And we were talking about calyx earlier. You can really see if she's got a calyx and you could cut into it if you want to, or you could release the weight from it and in turn release its control over the hair. Okay, so we've got that texture in there. And that went from just sort of a weird little skinny section to now it's got some life, now it's got some energy, it's got some shape. But again, even though it's pretty shaggy in through here, with each layer over the top, we're going to elongate where we start putting the cut section. So it won't be as obvious. Okay, are we ready to move on, Colleen? We are. All right, me too. Okay, so now we are in the mid sections that we took from the mast up into our crown. I've got my first section here. Same, we're gonna go about an inch with this. You can go a little finer and thinner. The thicker the hair, the thinner the sections. That's just sort of a golden rule with these things. Now, I'm going to take this section Flat, for those of you who just joined us, the back of my hand is flat to the head. This is what we did in the underneath sections. You comb it out until your hand is flat like a plate, right? Like you could serve little things on it. You're then going to slide out. And on the first section, we were about two inches out. With this section, we wanna go further. We wanna go about four inches away. And you'll see that we're not going to be impacting the same amount of hair there. And as we cut, we put our shear flat on it, and then we cut, cut, cut in an upward direction. This will give us the tailoring that we're looking for, and then maintain some of the very length and the character toward those ends. I'm going to continue from side to side. No need to have a guide, eventually little guides will pop in there and you'll get a visual because we know exactly the distance that we're measuring away from our comb. So I'm gonna take the next section, hand is flat, comb it over the hand, half my comb is three inches, give it another inch, nice and clean where I can see it, cutting, tap, 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 maintaining those little bit of ends, and you'll start to see them react and, and give us a little bit of play there. Moving to the opposite side. And that's just my preference. You can, you can work around a head. People have asked me for years, do you have to go side to side? Just for me, it just it feels more balanced at the end of a cut if I'm really just looking at both sides. If there is a weird lift or bump or calic or something, 
I'm able to take it on as it occurs instead of looking for it later. Combing that out, try and give you a little different perspective here. Measuring the three inches away from the head and then giving that another inch. Combing it over the hand and taking that off and lifting it up. See how we're keeping some length right there. But this is quite tailored and beautiful to the head. Now, if she had thicker, coarser, more, you know, heavy hair, I would go ahead and do the disconnect to give it more texture. But because she's a little dolly with hair sewn on, I'm not a huge fan of texturizing these sections on her. So it's really all about adaptation and personalizing to give her a ready to wear look. So we will not do that on her. Holding it out. And it may seem a bit tedious at first, but once you get used to it, it's really fast. Measure with the comb, give it another inch, and cutting up, 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 maintaining that length. So we have one more section here that will then take us to the side panels. Any woman who is pulling her hair up, which is just about every woman with hair below her shoulders, um, is really going to want to maintain the option of um, pulling your hair back, doing top knots and so forth. So we're just gonna do something a little bit different in those side panels. Measuring it out. Keep it combed nice and neat because this way when you go back to cut these layers into her hair again, you can do it very easily. You can find those layers so nicely. Here's an example of that. Everything's combed down, right? She comes in for her next appointment. Oh, sorry, you're not even on camera. <laughs> sorry, teaching the walls. Um, and she's like, oh, whatever you did, it was perfect. And then you're like, oh man, I had like 50 clients that day. I don't remember what I did. And so I'll show you here how it will all come back to life. Just combing through, and if I give it a little shake, my section magically reappears. Because of using that disconnect and access technique together, the hair knows exactly where the section is, so it takes all the guesswork out of it. So if you did a big old weird nasty section, that's what's gonna show the next time you lift it up. <laughs> so for me, I think this is just, for me, it's the intelligent way to cut. I'm not saying I'm intelligent. That's why I need intelligent systems I can follow um, because it just makes maintaining her look so much easier. And look, most clients, you know, they come to you because they love you. But if you can give them that consistency every single time and at the same time be willing to change, because you know they've done research on the number one reason clients change. Does anyone know the answer to this? You wanna know the number one reason she dumped you and went somewhere else? Cause you won't change. That's the number one reason. Cause it's much easier to say, oh, same thing. Yeah, 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 great. Mm -hmm. Give her that wedge again, give her that, you know, cut you've been giving her for 10 years. Easy for you, doesn't always make her happy. So something to consider. Be ready to change when she wants it. <laughs> okay, so now with our side panels here, we know that we've got the curtain fringe to deal with. So I'm gonna let the curtain fringe dictate more of the actual shape. And here I'm gonna start over directing. So even with the very first section, I'm gonna take it back to the previous. I'm gonna come out the same distance, about the four inches, and I'm definitely cutting in that upward direction. So the difference here is the side panels generally have less hair. So be careful because, you know, most ladies don't have a lot of hair growing under their ears and so forth. So, or hairy ears, that's a whole nother thing. So we want to make sure <laughs> that when you're cutting, you're really taking into account that there's just not as much there. So two sections here, 
first one is gonna go back, all the way back. Don't include it because then you're gonna overcut and end up with an empty section. All the way back and cutting up, 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 up. Get away from it because you only have a little bit of hair there, unless of course she has hairy ears as we discussed. So you only have a little hair there, so you have to be careful. The front section, boom, still all the way back to the previous, right? Combing it nice and neat, getting my distance. It's a little too much distance. <laughs> nice and neat, allowing for it to travel, and bam, 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 bam. Taking that off. I would rather zhuzh and play with that forward hair later than make a commitment and have to deal with it. So that's just how I like to deal with that. But look how, look at that beautiful bounce and wave. Sorry, I put on my QVC voice for a second. I apologize for that. <laughs> look at that wave, look at that shine. Okay, so I'm <laughs> tousling that hair and you can see the move and the softness gets really in there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna do the same thing. Taking it, holding it, making sure we take it back, combing over, whether you comb it over one way or the other isn't really making much difference because you're doing such a nice clean line to remove that hair. And remember, get away from it. If you cut those ends, she's gonna have a big hole right under her ear. Not fun. So we have a question from Lauren S. When you Hi, are Lauren. directing the front pieces, are you taking it all the way back to the mastoid area? I am, and thanks for joining us today, Lauren. I'm taking it all the way back to the mastoid area because that's just gonna maintain even more long length. I find that most people, they're just so thin in through that zone that if you don't take it all the way back, you're gonna start to slope up just because of the ear in that region. So, great question, Lauren, thank you. And then we're gonna take this back. Keep following your process though, right? Like, palm is, you know, palm is up, combing it over, taking my measurement, and then taking it back, right? That's like in addition to the measurement. And then tap, 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 taking off all that extra. I'm loving this. All right, so pretty cool what we have going on here so far. I think she's looking beautiful, nice soft texture there. And so now we're getting to where we would want to take and dry the hair so that the crown section can be cut a little bit differently. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some of it on wet. Again, I would probably do it, I would just dry the whole crown and, and just work with it that way. But so you don't have to wait for me to dry hair, I'm gonna do it this way and then I'll finish on dry. So I'm gonna take from center, splitting that Pac-Man right in half, right in the mouth. Anybody old enough to remember playing the original Pac-Mans or? No, probably Nobody's as old as I am. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the center there. Ooh. Sorry, my camera is so tiny. If I make random hey, sections, forgive me. <laughs> okay, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just do classic triangular axis cutting techniques from that point. And that's the thing, that's what's so great about the SMART method is you can just use all these things together. It's not one technique that gets you to one cut, but it's a series of tools in your toolbox. I'm gonna to take a triangular section at the back. And remember, just like before, give it a little shake. That was where the previous one left off. All right, sorry, that, that has left the building. 
I'm gonna take from that triangular section, flat to the head, and I don't want this to get too layery, folks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure, and then I'm gonna measure more. I'm gonna double that, because I don't want this to get too short on the top. <laughs> Am I still on camera? <laughs> Working up. Now, everything is adaptable, right? So if your hair is extra long, you're gonna double that distance. If your hair is already pretty short, then you're gonna cut that distance in half. Say if you're working in a more of a lob type texture. So we have a question from Nicole. Hey, when Nicole. you are on the left side, you are cutting from the back to front with your section, but on the right, you are cutting front to back. Won't that change the way the hair falls? Did I cut front to back? I shouldn't have. Maybe you saw my last section. Oh, front to back. You, you mean comb, the combing it over in either direction? Is that, are you talking about this, Nicole? Combing it this way, as opposed to this way? When you were, but she's responding. Yes, yes, that's what okay. she said. Yeah, so basically I'm, I'm really trying to make everything nice and clear so you can see it. But don't think of it as front to back as much as you just think of it as straight. So as long as you're straight off from the section, and both, hopefully I did, forgive me if I didn't, you should have started at mast and then worked your way forward to the hairline. And keep on me, Nicole, if I did that, I apologize. <laughs> okay, we know exactly where that this one, you know, it's the top hair, so I'm being a little extra cautious. I comb the hair over instead of this way so I can really see it. And then just cutting and lifting as I work. And see, this is nice. It's, it's giving some nice graduation, some layering to the back, but there's enough weight to keep it down at the same time. So I'm just gonna continue in this fashion. No need to keep the hair underneath. It will fall from your grasp, coming out double that distance. Hair is over, and then tap, tap, tap in an upward direction. And you can keep misting it with either your weightless spray, if you need a little more control, then you can use um, your perfecting spray as well. So you're not gonna have as much hair here, right? Because there, there wasn't as much to give from underneath. So be careful. Now it's a straight section to the part. So it's no longer triangular. The reason for that is if you keep doing triangular sections, what will eventually happen is the section will get so wide at the front that it's just gonna create all this fatness around the face. So now I'm just taking straight sections from the center part and then cutting in an outward direction. Full comb. Keep it nice and neat. And then cutting out. And we have one section left on the side. Flat out full comb, and I, can, I have more technique for the very front. I didn't over direct the crown because I want that to really show, and really the crown has more of a full section than the underneath layers. I think she's already starting to look pretty sexy there. Let's continue around the other side. Let the top section fall. Hold it, full comb, and cutting up, 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 taking it off. Straight sections now, and this is what I mean by straight sections, just straight to the part. Holding it, full comb. All right. So tell me, folks, what are you doing to stay creative right now? Except, you know, watching your Michael Sean Corby videos, of course. What are some things you're doing to stay creative? So Heather Lewis has a question for you. Yeah. Would this work well for very curly hair? 
Yes, so with very curly hair, what I want you to do is with the under sections, you can be more aggressive. Um, I often think of this as a cut that has a basement, a main floor, and a roof. The under sections, um, more aggressive, like inch and a half, two inches from the head, you can start cutting. Um, and then by the top section, you wanna be far less aggressive. So curly hair does well with you sort of relieving some of that bulk underneath. But as you start to continue with that same shaping on the top, curly hair just by nature will round out. It'll give you more of a ball type shape. So curly hair it does two things usually. It does a triangle or it does a ball. If you overcut, it's a ball. If you undercut, it's a triangle. So what this will do, if you go more aggressive underneath and then you gradually come longer, it reverses the triangle. So every, all the shadows and textures within the cut help to balance what's happening with the curly hair. And we have this, um, we will have this coming soon. I can't say exactly when, but we will have a curly version of this coming soon. Won't we, Colleen? We will. <laughs> Good question though, thank you. And now I feel like I want to comb it backwards just so. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. And then tap, tap, tap. All right. So we are now at the point where we would want to switch for sure to dry hair to be able to get in there. And sorry if she's looking weird. I'm looking at a picture about the size of my thumb, so I apologize. It looks good. <laughs> it's good. Everything looks good thumb size. <laughs> Anybody tell me what they're doing to stay creative? It is live. Okay, so I'm just gonna just give it a little bit of a scrunch there, blending those sides. Trying new colors on my hair. Hey, I can see that, Christy. <laughs> and what colors have you done? <laughs> Greens or? Rose gold. Rose gold, I like rose gold. And Six Maria, times, girl. Yeah, Alexandra's wow. cutting her own hair. Be careful, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Christy's gonna do turquoise next. Who? Um, who can tell me how often you think I am cutting and coloring my hair? It's really sad. He's doing it every day, you guys. <laughs> every other day. <laughs> every other day. Megan's doing hers once a week. <laughs> Yeah, I am, um, I'm doing my hair every other day and it's a little bit, oh, like, <laughs> I've never been that high maintenance, but now being on camera daily, I'm like, ooh, looking a little gray. Um, and if you get a chance to check it out, I, if you have high and tights, guys, as long as you cut your hair every other day, it's easy, it's, it's almost flow be easy. You can just and listen for the sound. So that's what I'm doing. If I go three or four days, I'm actually afraid I won't be able to maintain it, especially at the back. All right, so what the hell is going on with this mannequin? What's in her hair? Um, I promised I would share something with you, like one of my little finds from exploring around the streets of uh, Taiwan. Um, I was looking for um, Jan Brady rollers. You know what those are, right? Those pink foam rollers. And foam roller was really where I wanted to go with it. But I found these um, foams, I'll try and get them nice and close, um, that have wire inside. Hello. And so whatever way you move them, um, they'll hold. And so they're super soft and super, super comfy, almost like a pair of really nice socks. Hello. Um, so uh, I like using these uh, to let hair air dry. What I do is I just let the hair get is you know as dry as possible with a towel, right? Again, this is washing, you know, ready to wear. You don't have to do anything. And what I'll do is I'll just put it in, 
like so. You close it and it's nice and soft. You know, it, it, what it reminds me of, you know, they have that thing to give you like a faux fringe for the day, right? But it's, it's not that. And what I like is it's not silky, the silkier texture, it falls out too easily. And as you're rolling it, don't be like, oh, it's not a perm. You don't have to be tight with it. Just be kind of loose as you roll up and it will keep it nice and bouncy. It's, it's like Jan Brady meets a donut meets a hot stick from Glamour Shots in the 80s. Um, but what it, what it does is it gives this, um, this uh, uh, the look of an iron or a blow dry, but you don't need either. Um, so we, have, we have a question from Shakira. Hi, Shakira. Instead of allowing to air dry with a dryer with rollers, leave a de defined lines. Would a dryer with rollers leave defined lines? Would a dryer with rollers, like a round brush, or? Um, I guess it, it's gonna dry how, however you style um, this, this cut, because it starts with a zero. I w I'm not sure if you were with us uh, at the very beginning, Shakira, but it starts with a nice clean zero, and then everything is inside cutting until the last section we did, which was like six inches off the head, just a little bit of a taper, a little graduation at the ends. So this will actually blow out nice and clean, um, no matter how you style it. But the goal is to, to not have to style it. Okay. Um, so to expand on what she was asking, so if you roll those really tight, are you gonna get a defined line? Oh, these? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's why I say, you know, just open it, close it to the end. All right, I'll show you on this one open and you can also get that cool you know it looks it's cooler to not have the ends cool uh curled right so you can leave those free as well but it's a very gentle if you do a traditional um like rag curl for example because the the rag is so skinny by the time you get the the hair around it that's why people use socks more often because it'll come out a little fatter but even with that, the two reasons people get lines and get too curly is one, the hair is just too wet. And two, to your point, Shakira, it's just too tight as well. You can see this is just already, and the cut's not even done yet. We're still gonna go in and do our final step. You can see it's just kind of bouncy and textured. I've been doing a lot of dry, natural, styles we've got dream waves using nothing but a scarf and then we've got our shag our modern 70s shag that dried um i just put her outside <laughs> and let her dry so um i thought we should show something a little more sophisticated as an option um you can find these on amazon i'm sure pretty easily um and uh, make sure you reach out to me at michael sean corby if you have any questions i would be happy to um help you find something like these if you think it's something you might be able to use okay so now i'm going to enjoy that volume just going to push it around in different directions and again i like it you know i like it almost in the eyes not everybody will. You can always cut a little more if you want to, but I like it. I like it that way. And so now what I'm going to do is the final sectioning of this or the final cutting technique, um, which is axis cutting for movement. And I'm going to, just so that it's um, softer toward the ends, I'm going to use a notching shear for this. And so it's not gonna cut every single hair, but it's just gonna take this top layer and give it a little bit of a blend. So we're going to start at the front here. And I'm just gonna follow in the same lines. Hopefully you can see, same lines I was using earlier from her original fringe Pac-Man. And take the whole side panel I'm gonna put it in my hand here. 
and then we're going to blend through that lifting up and working backward at the same time so not every single hair gets cut which is helping with that ready to wear aesthetic i'm going to do it on the opposite side and because I still want that to come away from the face, I'm just going to, instead of the hand up, the hand is gonna be over on this side. I can still see where that needs to be cut. And I'm working back and away. Now, if you're afraid of a texturizer, God knows I've been scared of them and sometimes what they do, you could uh, certainly, Use a straight shear for this as well. Just um, don't go in as aggressively with the length. I'm now going to take the top section, or sorry, the side panel all the way to the top. Because it's texture, this, the sections are nice and fat and large, bringing it forward and then taking it backward and away, just to give some nice blend to this look. Michael Sean, did you know what the name of those rollers were? Um, I think I have one with like a name on it, so I'll let you guys screenshot it. Oh wait, it's written in Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not helpful at all. Come on, folks, work on your Mandarin. Um, but I would just say I found it by kind of searching a donut. Message me on Instagram. I'll help you find it. Um, I, so Marnie just posted, um, hold on. I just, everybody on the call, I just posted, um, an Amazon link from Marnie Mazzola. So I think we've located them on Amazon. Woohoo. Thank you, Marnie. Holding this back. And then if you're if you're a little bit afraid of texturizers, again, I know some of you are, I'm gonna do it with a straight shear as well, just so you can see it's it's not scary either way if you don't have a notching shear. Take it from center in that fringe. Bring it forward to the fringe, to our curtain, and then cutting it back and away from the face. So it gives it a nice, sexy look. I like it. Now I gotta do both sides, don't I? <laughs> And I've intentionally left the fringe longer. If it bugs you and you want it out of her eyes, that's very easy to do. Cutting back and away. Um, but for me, since it's wash and wear, I wanna be able to take it to the side if she needs to and have it work. I wanna be able to have it, you know, come back a little and off her face if she needs something like that. So I'm looking at everything as a thumbnail. So <laughs> now, if you were going to air dry this haircut, what products yes. mix do you recommend using? Yeah, so I've been thinking about this. There are so many things I love, and I, the thing I always like best for curl, no matter what, is a mousse. So I, I would mix the, the whip glaze. So if you're blonde or if you're any dark tone, this is gonna balance the tonality. It doesn't put purple onto your hair like some of those do, which it's great. But if you go too far, it's all over your shower and it stains your hair purple. This works on the tonality, sort of balancing the missing blue and red tones in your hair. I would start there because that's giving you at the very least leave-in conditioner. Then I would go in with the, um, with the full thickening mousse or the full thickening cream. If you want a little more definition, I would go with the mousse. If you want it just more voluminous, I would go with the cream. 
Now, what if you don't need either of those because your hair is on the bigger and thicker side? Then I would swap that out for the PhD five and one. And then I would finish with um, the heat styling spray. Good question. I'm just gonna finish touching up all these now that I decided to go with straight shear instead of texture. But try, if you have the texture shear, try it first. It is a nice way to just sort of get in there and um, give it some softness and not really commit to a hard shape of any kind. All right. And now, We've gone through, we've touched up the texture. Maybe when it's dry, I know what I need. Wait, I have to run and get it. See if we have another question. <laughs> what happens when you don't have an assistant with you in person? I need my full dry volume blast. <laughs> now, to just keep giving that lift, and again, this is once it's dried, I'm just gonna spray it primarily the root right now. It's not like she's going out dancing at the minute. So I find it's just such a great little root lifter too. I know we all get crazy for our number one selling styling product, but this gives instant volume and texture and a little bit of thickness to the hair or air to the hair. It's never stiff or sticky. How am I doing? I'm only looking at a thumbnail here. You know what? I want to let you know that this is the consensus of the group that this haircut is hot. And All right. Well, if she's sexy, I'm happy, right? I used to tell my clients when they'd say, oh, I think this is cute. And I'd be like, do you want cute or do you want sexy? Like, let's ask your husband or your wife. Looks amazing. Love. So let's see what the other one is doing while we, you know, when we goofed around on our finish. You can see she's she's not so bad either. She's got her fringe going on. She's still pretty wet, but that's that's going to dry nicely as well. So you can have your, you know, last days of the 80s, or we were kind of wearing this texture in the 90s too, I have to say those grungers in the house. Um, so you can have it be a curly day. God knows everybody deserves a little day off now and then. Cute to you know put up or do little faux bobs out of or cute little pinups. But either way, it will dry easily this way once that actually is dry. Or my tip of the day um, is uh, these little uh, soft foam little rollers. So I'll take your questions if you have any. My my lovely viewers here today. Thank you for, thank you, Chrissy. Nice to see you, Yarno. <laughs> thank you, Yarno. All right. Any other questions before I head out? I think that's it. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be filming all day. Lots more things coming your way. Like we've got a cool lob and how to air dry your lob I'm shooting today. So check those out at Michael Sean Corby, MSCTV. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.